it's spooky season. And so generally what that means is we're talking about very misunderstood or spooky critters. We're talking bats, black cats, rats, all sorts of little, you know, creepy crawlies. And we've talked about them in other little Halloween themed videos before. But today I want to talk about one of probably, if not the most, feared and misunderstood type of animal other than snakes. These guys probably actually top the snakes of the list of fears. And in fact, I think that's in fact what it does. It goes them, snakes, and then rats. As well as, we've I've also seen a huge uptick in the popularity of what's happening this time of year all throughout the more desert, aridity, and plains portions of western and southwestern parts of the United States. And that is tarantulas. And so if you guys don't know what I'm quite referring to is that every year around this time between late September and to the end of October, the male tarantulas, at least in the new world, especially around in the parts of the United States. So, you know, parts of Colorado, Oklahoma, Texas, California, Arizona, male tarantulas, it's their it's breeding season for those tarantulas, mostly the Oklahoma brown, but there are some other ones out there that all of the males, they go through their final molt and they go out looking for the girls and they are so bold and in so met numerous amounts that it is very incorrectly called the tarantula migration. They're not migrating anywhere, it's just boys looking for the ladies. And so with all of that in mind, this kind of general misconception of tarantulas in general and the fear of them, as well as the complete misunderstanding of this amazing, cool, natural phenomenon, I figured I wanted to talk about five cool, interesting facts about tarantulas. Now, I will want to preface this, that I am not a tarantula spider or invertebrate expert by any means, especially when compared to my knowledge about reptiles and specifically snakes. I am very lacking in that department, but I know enough to be dangerous and I know enough to share some cool stuff. So let's get into it. The very first one is that tarantulas, probably the most famous spider in the world, with the exception of possibly the Black Widow, aren't actually true spiders. While yes, they are, you know, arthropods and they are arachnids in the kind of structure tree of the breakdown of the, you know, the tree of life, the web of life and how we differentiate in taxonomy, they're not actually true spiders. And there's a very easy way to tell that. Although for some of the faint of heart, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this up close and close, uh, up in person and personal and up close. There we go. I got there eventually. And that has to do with their pincers and their fangs and their mouth parts. True spiders, their fangs actually kind of do this. They do not face forward or down. They face outward and come together and make like a pincer movement. And no, we're not talking about the pincer movement from World War II. We're talking about they actually make little pincers. And a lot of arthropods, not just spiders, but other crustaceans that and other arthropods and invertebrates, that's what they do. They do this. Tarantulas and other spiders in their clade, which is kind of a breakdown, it's a type of family in the taxonomy nomenclature world, is their fangs actually point straight down, which in fact is the reason why you see so many tarantulas with their threat display, they rear up on their hind legs and bare their fangs. And not just the tarantulas, it's those other members in their, in, in their clade, the most famous of which being the Sydney funnelweb spider found in Australia they actually have a very hard time biting down from a straight standing position. Whereas something like a wolf spider or a black widow or something could be standing on your hand and they could just do this and they can pierce your skin and bite down. A tarantula or some of those other types of spiders have a very difficult time to do that. That's why they have to rear up to go down. That's why they have that threat display. In fact, I was once told and almost shown that some of the larger species of tarantula, they can almost actually feel their fangs just kind of like going across their hand and their skin while they're walking along, but can't actually go down in pure skin. Just a really cool and interesting little fact. The next one is one that I had heard about, but I had to do a little bit more research just to be sure and to make sure that I wasn't, again, spreading misinformation about them. And that is the fact that some tarantulas can actually make noise. Now, we all know that spiders, for a lot of people, can be very scary enough. But add in the additional fact that they can actually make noise and hiss at you could send people running for the hills. But this is in fact true. Not all tarantulas can do it, 
but some ones can. Essentially what they do is like many other species of invertebrates, they will, they don't actually make the noise from their mouths. They're not screaming or hissing like a snake would or a, or a lizard would. What they do is they actually rub their back legs together and they have very specific types of hairs on their back legs that when they rub together make this kind of rasping hissing sound which supposedly according to a couple different researchers can be heard up to 15 feet away which is insane i've never actually spent that much time with the spiders to know for a fact this is in fact the case but hey if anybody keeps some of these species then let me know if you've ever heard them do so i will say that some of the ones that they did list as ones that can do it are the uh king baboon the uh the golden starburst as well as the largest species of tarantula the goliath bird eater the i think it's t blondi is the uh latin name for them again correct me tarantula names are super hard i know i always get chewed out about my latin names and pronunciation but i think that's the one but the goliath bird eater we all know which one i'm referring to in that one those are ones that have been noted to be able to make actual sounds as a warning to be left alone the next one is going to be probably the most technical thing that I've talked about, and I will try to limit this a little bit, almost as much as to where I was talking about the difference between leucism and albino, where a lot of more technical people got on me about leaving some parts out or not quite explaining enough, but the more in-depth I get to it, the harder it is to explain. So this one is that tarantulas and pretty much every invertebrate, insect, and other spiders don't actually have blood. They don't have true blood with, you know, red cells and white cells. What they have is this kind of different type of liquid called hemolymph. And this hemolymph essentially acts the way that traditional in most vertebrates, they have their blood system where it carries oxygen to the rest of their bodies, that it acts as their immune system, and that it has plasma that allows things to move around and be carrying around. These guys don't have all of that. There is plasma that makes up this really kind of weird liquid, but it does in fact do all of those things in general. Now tarantulas and spiders do have true hearts, and that heart does pump this liquid, the hemolymph, throughout their whole body. And not only does this essentially act as blood and then some, it actually acts as their form of locomotion, how they move. So what happens when you look at the spider's legs, you can see that spider's legs are ligamented. Every single one of those things essentially kind of acts as like a little hydraulic press to where the hemolymph is carried into those potty segments. When it fills up, the pressure builds and the limbs extend out. And then once it drains and goes back, it contracts almost automatically. And that is how you see sometimes that almost deliberate locomotion, that is that hemolymph filling and contracting moving that spider along. The same thing happens when they, as we all know, can move strikingly fast, especially some species of tarantulas can move almost faster than the human eye can even keep up with. That same me mechanism of that hemolymph being carried throughout their system into all of their leg portions allows them to jump, allows them to move and run very quickly. And that's not tarantulas. It's not just tarantulas, I should say. It is with many species of vertebrates, including other true spiders and other species of insects as well. Just a really cool and interesting fact that when I first heard about it, I was like, I'm sorry, what? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what now? But yeah, just really cool and interesting little fact. This next one's gonna circle around to what I mentioned at the beginning of the video when we were talking about mating. And this one, I'm gonna get a little bit into their kind of whole mating sequence. And I'll do this as fast and as concisely as possible. So as we all know, the tarantulas molt. They, as they get older, they molt their exoskeleton and that's how they grow. Males go through a kind of weird metamorphosis once they hit their final mature, sexually mature molt. And that is, is that their pedipalps, which are at the very front. So they all, we all know they have the eight legs, the four pairs of legs, they have their mouthpieces, and then they have two other ones right at the front. Those are called pedipalps. That's what helps kind of move the food towards their mouths. And in the case of mature males, what happens is when they finally molt, their pedipalps kind of go through a change where the front end of them kind of get enlarged and almost kind of like this bulbous shape. And what that does is that allows them to, males, they will spin this kind of blanket of web and they'll deposit their sperm or their sperm, it is sperm, it is sperm, it's not a spermatophore, onto this blanket and they'll take this modified pedipalp and they'll rub it in there and that collects it and holds it safely on their pedipalps. Now, at the very, now this is their, generally this is their last molt. Male tarantulas have, for the most part, for most species, have a much shorter lifespan than the females. 
as we all know that a lot of especially the new world tarantulas are known to live upwards of 20 plus years males usually less than five or six and that all has to do with their life cycle it's all a little bit kind of weird and alien which is probably another reason why people don't like them so once this happens this mature male goes to its final molt it's probably five or six years old at this point and around this time of year right now they go out looking for the females now i'm mostly talking about the tradition the you know new world mostly united states southwestern parts of the united states terrestrial tarantulas all of them do have different practices but a lot of this is fairly commonplace for many of the species the males go out looking for the females and in the case of you know the burrowing tarantulas they will come across what in a lot of the cases are lines of thread of silk that the female puts out sometimes over a foot out from their little burrow entrance most of the time it's just you know a little bit webbing right at the very front but during this time of year they will string out very long strands of thread and you know spider silk out to where the males will find them and they will come along and obviously there are hormonal things and things and uh and scents that go along with that but they will come along and they will find these very long little pieces of spider thread and they'll actually pluck and play them almost like a guitar to let them to essentially announce his presence to let him know that a i'm not food and b you know what i'm saying right so they'll actually play that string as they move closer towards the burrow arrow uh the burrow entrance and they'll actually even sometimes kind of drum on the ground to also let them know like hey what's going on to find out whether or not the female is receptive if in fact she is comes the next pretty famous part of tarantula mating and that is the mating dance so, so what happens is that in the case of pretty much all tarantula species they will actually rear up on their you know their cephalothorax will go up and they'll leave the ground a little bit and just their back legs will actually hold them up and they will kind of do this with their forelimbs and this is another part of that male final molt. This is not true with all species of tarantulas. They all get the modified pedipelp, but a lot of the times, at least for a lot of the ones that we traditionally keep, they actually get what's called a tibial hook or a tibial spike. And what that is, is at the forefront of their forelimbs, there's a little hook right at the front of their forelimb. And what they use that for, for the species that have it for when they go up and they're doing their little mating dance, is they will actually take that hook and actually hold on to the female's fangs and then use that modified pedipalp to deposit into an opening on the female's abdomen, on the underside of their abdomen, to deposit the sperm so that way that female can then use that to fertilize her eggs and then lay her egg sac. And then at that point, the male will usually try to get out of there because sometimes that female can just come right down on top of that male. So again, not all species of tarantulas, the males do get that final hook, but they all do get that modified pedipalp. And then after that, it'll be a little while, and then usually the male will die very shortly afterwards. Some species will continue to live on, but traditionally it's their final molt. It's that it, that's the end of the male's life cycle, but the female will continue to live on and reproduce every single year. So the final one is a little bit more sciency and intricacy as well. So this one, we talked how they have real hearts, but they don't have blood. They have this other thing called hemolymph. They do have lungs as well, but they're a little bit different. I'm basically talking about how tarantulas breathe and how they intake oxygen. Because as you know, they don't have traditional mouth. So they do have a type of lung, but it's shaped and it looks a little bit differently. It's actually what they call a book lung because this kind of fleshy little membranes, they look and they're kind of folded. They look like folded pages of a book. And tarantulas and all spiders have them tarantulas as a whole usually have two pairs of these book lungs and what they essentially do is diffuse oxygen that allows the hemolymph to be able to uh, combine with that oxygen molecule and then take that and spread it to the rest of their bodies and that's actually how tarantulas breathe is through diffusion where literally oxygen is absorbed into the tarantula and then using a modified trachea into those book lungs, it allows the diffusion of oxygen into the rest of the body. And that entire process is actually the reason why we don't have giant three, four, five, six foot sized monster spiders, is because the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere is too low for the 
body of a spider to be able to actually accommodate for that. So right now the oxygen percentage is much lower even in the Earth's history than it was before, you know, however long ago during the during different Mesozoic eras and the Cambrian and the Precambrian periods like that. Uh, and then obviously I'm not, don't hold me to that. The amounts were different and the chemical composition of the atmosphere was different all throughout Earth's history. But right now it is significantly lower than it has been during other parts of Earth's history where arthropods work significantly larger. And that is because with, uh, without a very high oxygen content, it cannot diffuse enough to be allowed to carry oxygen through the rest of that size of a body. So the largest spiders that we have right now, that's about as big as they physically can get without a different sort form of evolution to where they will actually take in oxygen differently or have an entirely other weird basis of being able to live that even we can't even comprehend right now. But that is essentially the reason why Number one is how they can't hold their breath and they don't breathe and they don't they don't breathe in like like we do. And that is also the reason why they don't get huge. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. As I said before, I am not the biggest tarantula expert, but it did take me a little while to go through kind of a little bit of this as well as it give me a fun opportunity to talk and learn a little bit more about a group of animals that I don't necessarily know a whole lot about. So I get to learn more and then share that knowledge with you guys as I really like to do for a lot of these top five videos, or I guess this will still go with part of that playlist. So if you guys want to go check out the playlist of top five um, reptile videos where I talk all sorts of different, usually different species, but I've done a couple different like fun facts and things like that in there too. If you want to check out that full playlist, there's only 40 videos in there at this point. So helps out my uh, click through late, lets the algorithm, it helps YouTube push my content more because it says that, hey, a lot of people are watching this, you should watch this too. So if you can, please go through that playlist, like and subscribe if you can, it really helps me out. I'm trying to do this full time. And uh, animals are expensive, so it really does help me out, and being a YouTube partner does a lot better than uh, making TikToks or Instagram posts, although I'm admittedly not very good about posting on TikTok. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I don't have a whole lot of spooky content planned, as I've mentioned in previous ones before, but if you wanted to go check out the playlist of spooky content, I'll also put the link for the playlist here at the end of this video. You can go through there. I did it two years in a row. I learned about all sorts of fun, little cool, spooky, uh, different type of Halloween themed animals, as well as monster movie animals. It's a really cool playlist. You should check that out. And you know, again, thank you. Like and subscribe if you can. Hope you're having a great day. And if there's any other Halloween or uh, even in general other type of content you would like to see me talk about, please let me know down below in this comments. Questions, comments, concerns, same thing. Email, Facebook, Instagram, all that jazz. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you guys have a happy and safe Halloween and fall season. And we will check you next time.